Welcome to 360 Racing. I'm Tay Moss, the skipper of a Kirby 23 sailboat racing out of Queen City Yacht Club called Warrington. Needless to say, the 2020 season was a mess as far as racing goes. We did manage to get off four races despite COVID, and we placed first, third, second, and third in them. Our club is still not entirely back to normal in early 2021, but it's getting close. Uh, this is the footage from the second race. I didn't bring my camera for the first race, unfortunately, which had high wind and a lot of fun. In that first race, we got a hard-earned second place with a close finish. Our division seems to be one of the most interesting in the club, with six boats that are pretty well matched, so the finishes have been within seconds. I decided that this year I'm going to focus on races or incidents that are interesting, rather than try to focus on everything at the same time. So today I bring you a cautionary tale from the world of the start sequence in sailboat racing. So you see here that Keith and I are in the start sequence. We have about four minutes left. And it's a downwind start, which is unusual. And I had already decided that I wanted to start the race on the port end of the line, that is the left end, while on starboard tack. And unlike on a standard upwind start, if you're cruising down the start line on a starboard tack, no one can force you over early because you're the leeward boat. At least that was my plan. So then I started thinking backwards. Uh, see, there's the port end of the starting line. So this is where I want to be exactly when the sailboat race starts. So I was thinking in one minute increments of where do I want to be at one minute left to go, at two minutes left to go, at three minutes left to go, and so on. So I knew, for example, I wanted to be roughly at the starboard pin with about three minutes left to, the, to go. And, uh, but I'm gonna find here that I'm not going quite as fast as I thought I would be uh, to make it in time. So I'm gonna attack before I get to that starboard pin. Now this is of course a 360 video, so if you wanna look around, you can drag the mouse and uh, see some of the other boats and get a sense of what was going on. Um, unfortunately with 360 video, things appear further off than they actually appear in person. So just keep that in mind as the events of the start trans uh, transpire. So you see I'm, I'm looking at the starboard pin and I'm like, okay, I need to pack tack now so I can get back to the other pin. Um, my goal was to be at the um, port side pin where I'm now facing um, in at about the two minute mark. Uh, but this tack took longer than I expected, and it took us that longer to get back up to speed. Um, so that's okay. You can always make adjustments. The critical thing is making the right move um, at about one minute left. That should be around the time that you make your final uh, tack, or your final move. And uh, you want to take into consideration the other boats around you and, and so on. Um, but I, I wouldn't necessarily advise going back and forth across the start line like this in a traditional upwind start. Um, but it worked for me in this situation, sort of, as you'll see. Okay, we have one minute left to the um, to pee down. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm not quite at that pin where I wanted to be. But that's okay. We're gonna we're gonna make adjustments. What I do at this situ in this situation is I look at how much time is left when I cross the, uh, the, the place I want to be on the start line and then I divide that amount of seconds in half and then I add a uh, fudge factor for a little bit of loss in speed when you tack and uh, that's the point at which I want to make my final move. So you see that I'm going to I'm going to cross the port end of the starting line here at about a minute 20. So that's equivalent to 80 seconds. So I divide that in half, that's 40. Then I add about five to 10 seconds for making the tack. And I know that I want to make my tack between 40 and 50 seconds. And that'll put me right at the pin. If you want to be further down the start line, then you just simply add more time. I see Panache here. I'm slightly worried about them, but then they don't make a move here, so I'm not worried anymore. They're not trying to hook underneath me or anything. You can't see it because it's obscured by the mast in the sail, but there's another one of our main competitors coming up here. Um, it's a J-22 named Troubadour. There they are. Okay, so I made my move here at about 45 seconds left. I'm in a great position relative to Troubadour. Um, they theoretically could have tried to get underneath me, maybe, but they weren't. Um, they didn't have quite enough boat speed. All right, so I know that I'm gonna be pretty much right at the pin at the start, which is perfect. I'm on starboard tack, I'm the most leeward boat here. Um, so I bleed a little speed just because I can, and remember I wanna be right at that pin. I don't really wanna cruise down the pin if I don't have to. Then in comes Swallow, and watch what happens next.
Yeah, he's yelling at me no room. He thinks he has it right away. And rather than risk a collision, I go ahead and peel off here. I miss the start. So then I have to do a 360, which I have to fit in behind this other J-22 um, Troubadour. So I think I'm going to go right behind Troubadour. In retrospect, Dan said that uh, he thought I, I had a perfect start, except for being fouled by Swallow. And apparently he, he spoke to the skipper Swallow after the race, and um, uh, that skipper felt bad because he realized at around this point after the start that he had actually fouled me. But, you know, it was a boat that's new to him, and he got confused a little bit by the downwind start, and he just um, he just messed up, which, which happens sometimes. Sailing is a self-regulating sport, so we're usually pretty good about... Um, you know, talking to each other when we make mistakes like this, and, and there's a lot of forgiveness and leeway given to each other. Um, but in retrospect, I, I probably should have protested him, and then he would have had the opportunity to do a, um, a clearing turn, set of clearing turns to um, clear the penalty. Um, and as it turned out, he beat me in the race. So if I had um, shouted a, uh, a, you know, a protest at him, uh, I might have actually um, gone up a place into third place. Instead, we finished fourth place. So this is why this is a warning uh, story to all you sailors out there that um, if you think you're right in the rules, just go ahead and protest. Okay, so I'm doing this turn here. The reason I'm not cutting in closer is because I'm afraid of hitting fine wine right in front of me. So um, it's actually a lot closer than it looks. So I have to sort of go on the outside hip of them right there. And then, okay, now I can clear them. And so that gives the shark born home here room to get in front of me and steal my win for a minute. Anyway, it was an interesting race, and um, we ended up getting fourth, and we would have gotten third probably if I had uh, protested the start. So this is a cautionary tale about what to do or not do when you're racing. So I hope you enjoy these videos. Please like and subscribe to see more 360-degree VR racing in the inner harbor of Lake Ontario.